Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So I have here a Peugeot 3008. It's come down for an additive tank refill. Okay, so inside the car it's got a like a service spanner light on there and a triangle warning up there. I'm not sure if it's got the engine management light on. Just wait a minute and we'll see. No, it hasn't. Okay, so he's already had this diagnosed elsewhere and he's texted me over the code what it was and I assumed it's going to need a additive tank refill which is the pad fluid tank so we'll get the diagnostic set up and we'll see what we're looking at okay if i use the launch uk euro tab 3 we we'll just run a scan here uh, we have ecm p15 b3 additive adding additive level calculated is lower than the minimum threshold so that really just says to me that it needs the ad blue uh, sorry not ad blue additive tank topping up which is the eli's fluid so we do also get a message down here saying fault, engine fault, repair needed. And it does also give you that message. Particle filter additive level low. Yeah, so for, it's nice to see a car that's actually telling you what's wrong, not just saying some random, some random uh, message that doesn't uh, relate to anything that it's telling you. Uh, so if we go to data stream on here, uh, exhaust line information. Let's just select all of those. Additive tank level amount is calculated at 150 mil. It could be more, it could be less. Usually empty when, when I find them. Cinder count in the particle filter 99%. So the particle filter itself is at 99% of its life. Distance before the remaining particle filter 1100 kilometers. So we're here to do the tank at the minute. So this is all we're going to speak about. Minimum level reached on the tank. Yeah, we can see that in our live data here. And we can see that according to the levels, it's got 150 mil of fluid. The, there is no actual level in the tank. It's, it's just a calculation. The car calculates how much it thinks it's used over the amount of time you've driven it. So let's uh, take the tank off and get it refilled. Okay, under the passenger side of the car here at the rear, we have the tank, it's covered by a little plastic shield there. Uh, so a few 10 mil bolts to get that off. And then we have a little strap here that goes over as well. With a 10 mil bolt on each side. persuasion on that there we go move it to the side and we have the tank here okay so looking at the design of this it looks like it goes over the heat shield section of it there so just thinking whether or not we take it out or just disconnect the hose here and try and fill it on the car which would be right from here Okay, so this is the normal kit that we get. It's just a little adapter there. It goes onto the bottle like this, and we fill it up. We've got a couple of liters here. We'll get it put in. Okay, now we've got that connected to the fuel line, or at least uh, the additive uh, additive line, whatever you'd like to call it. It's not the actual fuel line that goes to the fuel tank. It goes to a separate tank, but it still does end up in the fuel tank. That's where this fluid gets injected. Now we hold it up and it just gravity feeds its way down. Okay, now that it's all gone, we'll get the second bottle in. It's just made a little bit of a mess there getting this connected back up. Again, we're just going to hold it here for a few minutes. And two litres should be plenty that's going to go into this tank. Alright, that's it. We get that connected back up to the tank. 
So I think we've got all of the bolts back in there. That nice heavy duty plastic cover is back on. Okay, now we're back in the vehicle. I think we've had the ignition off for too long. We'll have to uh, restart this. Okay, now we're back into this. We're going to go to the special functions and what have we got? After sales, this one. It's all a little bit different on this. Programming of the additive injected into particle. Programming of the total quantity of additive in the reservoir. I'll do an automatic programming. See how much that says it to. I think the manual one on this would probably obviously say if you want to, if you're only putting like one liter in, maybe you can just adjust it to say you're only putting a liter in. Uh, now let's go to the data stream again. See if that's changed. Where is it gone? So yeah, now the minimum level is not reached before it said it was. And we have volume of additive in the tank, 1000 mil. Yeah, so that, it does reset it to just a litre then. So let's see if we can, this one again, let's do manual. Numbers allowed. What is this talking about? Oh. What is that? Let's try that again. Maybe I didn't read that properly. Amount of additive in the tank. Quantity of product remaining in the flexible additive reservoir. Milliliters, 102 ml. Please record the number, then press next. Please enter no more than four digits. Two, one, two, three. 2000 mil only numbers allowed that's strange right let's forget about that we're just gonna have to settle with the 1000 mil that it's uh, recorded at now we can clear this code p15 b3 it's weird that even all of these cars I've seen so many of them but you plug some different models in and all of this sort of Procedure that you do here looks somewhat slightly different. Let's see what else we have here. This is just a standard setup that you get. So now we exit that, turn the ignition off, start the car back up. Oh, so it's 2500 miles past its service date. So that's why you got a spanner there. But now we have the rest of these lights have gone. And we should now no longer get the message up here saying about the additive. Okay. Now if we come back to this again, we'll just do another rescan just to confirm that we have no fault codes. Do another high speed scan. Isn't it funny, like when you look at these cars, when these sort of models came out, people will have a little chat about something else. While this scan is going ahead here, we'll wait for that to finish. So we've got no more codes there. So I'll, I'll flip the camera around now and just have a little bit of a discussion that uh, people have with these cars and most other cars. So this little conversation I'm having here doesn't relate to the repair I'm doing, it just, just came to my head as we were talking here. When these models of cars came out, people would, you know, give them all sorts of bad um, recommendations or whatever you call it, saying that the older Peugeots were much better and they were, they were more reliable, the 1.9 2 liter uh, XUD engines and whatever. Um, you know, they made these ones too complicated, all of that. And it's just funny that when you look at all cars, like as they're progressively getting newer and more modern, 
they're progressively getting less reliable. Reliable in some sense, but more reliable in other ways, because I do think that most older cars, you'd never really see them with sort of three, four hundred thousand miles on them. You do see modern cars with that mileage, but to get there, to get to even a hundred, hundred and twenty thousand miles now, you need to spend a lot more money than you would have many years ago. So the older, say, P-Reg 1996 ones, today's 97s, you'd rarely have to spend anything on it to get to a hundred thousand miles. These ones, a couple of little, little bits and pieces, but the newer Euro 6 ones, if you're going to do 120, 130,000 in one of those, you'd need uh, at least 10 grand in repairs, I'd say. Between AdBlue tanks, NOx sensors, catalysts, DPFs, um, mainly all of the emission stuff. The engine itself is not really that bad. All of the emission stuff uh, is what gives you the trouble. So that's it, looks like we're done on this. That's it, nice simple video. See you in the next one.